Hey, I'm Lily. You may have seen me before in virtual reality workshops, like at different libraries. I run Australian Immersive Education Academy, which aims for bringing positive changes in local communities with innovative technologies like virtual reality, augmented reality, and artificial intelligence. And this COVID innovation project, which we call Reconnect, is one great example for this purpose. It is a public health education project funded by the New South Wales government and in collaboration with the City of Parramatta, George's River Council, and Liverpool City Council. You know, during the past two years, there were lots of emotions, and every family's pandemic experience is unique. Now our society becomes more open, and we pay less attention to it, which is good in a sense. However, COVID is still around. Whether we are planning for the future or reflecting on the past, it is still an important issue, and it can still generate a big impact on our lives, like our children's health. This is a sort of the background of the project, and in the project we took two specific lenses. On one side, we want to provide a highly engaging virtual reality-based program to remind families, especially to help protect the children when we return to a normal life. And you know, children have the lowest vaccine rate. It is an important conversation we need to have. And on the other side. We want to capture families' pandemic experiences and present them in a virtual reality exhibition. We hope families find inspiration from each other's experience and stories, and find their own pace to reconnect with the world. And that's why we call the exhibition "Reconnect." To recruit families and invite families to discuss this somewhat serious topic, we decided to use the power of virtual reality and game-based learning. We created two web-based virtual reality games as the main vehicles for the engagement. The first game is about promoting personal hygiene habits by hand washing, and a player needs to keep rubbing her hands to produce bubble bullets and to use them to shoot the jumping coronavirus and to gain high scores. A countdown timer is used to remind the player to keep washing hands for at least 20 seconds. The gamified environment, the actual hand rubbing. And together with the vivid sound, the soap, and the bubble particles, cartoonish virus, all together make it a fun and educational VR experience. The second game is about reducing children's fear of getting COVID vaccines. Vaccines provided excellent protection against the coronavirus. With this game, a child and a parent can join in a virtual clinic together. Embedded into virtual avatars of a doctor and a patient, and start a VR roleplay game. And the players need to first understand how the vaccine works on the virus, come up with a short script between the patient and the doctor, and they need to use virtual props like a syringe, hand sanitizer, masks, and of course the cartoonish virus to act their script out. Better still, they can use a virtual camera to record their VR play experience. Almost all kids who play the VR game liked it, and the feedback blowed my mind. It was fun and interesting. It was amazing、yes. and fun.、Uh, it was、uh, amazing. I really enjoyed it. We made a new invention called the virtual hug. I was really happy about that. <laughs> it was very in- engaging, and it was very interesting to learn something through virtual reality.、Um, the workshop was really nice. It was realistic and.、Um, It was really collaborative.、Um, personally, I really liked it, and、uh, since it was about COVID, I think it teaches、um, to students that to stay hygienic and safe. These two games actually highlight two key specific virus fighting strategies for children and families: one with personal hygiene habits, and the other with taking COVID vaccines. Actually, everyone has probably seen this information a million times from TV, on posters and signs, or hear from others. However, the virtual reality approach is something different and something novel to them. They deliver the message as first-hand experience in a personal, immersive, and highly engaging way. 
I thought it was a really well, uh, real, well written game with a good message. Uh, really helps to um, teach in an interactive way, um, and uh, sort of by doing, um, it sort of sends the message better than just sort of learning uh, yeah. through paper. So yeah. good idea. I never tried this before. It's quite fun, and now I see you know with this virtual reality, you can do so much um, other things where you can't really have a you know, when you when you don't have you know much time or you have a, a physically uh, limitation. Um, yeah, so it was actually good fun and you know nice to try. I think it's really um, like interesting uh, experience today. It's my first time to experience a virtual reality, and I can see that in the long term that that's going to be uh, able to do a lot more as well. And I, I think all the families will be benefit from having some like uh, chance to experience that. I think. Um really like um, want other people to experience what we uh, try today. It's really successful in bringing across certain points about public health orders and hygiene use or proper hygiene um, in a way that isn't too overt and it's using subtlety. It's a really tricky thing to get right and I think that you guys have done a really good job in finding that balance. If you have something that is too clinical to educational kids turn off really quickly. I see virtual reality as being uh, incredibly important for programming now and also into the future for people who work in community spaces to have an understanding of how these technologies work and also how rapidly they change. Their feedback makes us so proud of what we have been doing and also encourages us to design and develop even more meaningful programs with and for the community.